One of the tasks on your private pilot checkride is the diversion. The way the examiner often sets this up is to have you fly the beginning portion of your cross-country flight, which you planned out in the oral portion. Let's say we're flying cross-country between Prosser, Sierra 40, and Wasco State, 35 Sierra. We're passing over a ridge with wind turbines when our examiner tells us that a plane is disabled on the runway and the airport is closed. We'll need to quickly decide that we need to divert and select an appropriate airport to go to. We'll use the Dalles Airport, a bit further to the west. Now, if we were on the ground, we could come up with new waypoints, determine magnetic headings and ground speeds, and calculate a new ETE. We don't have these luxuries, though so we'll need to use some rule of thumb approximations and lean on any resource we have in the cockpit to help us out. The key to a diversion is to not rush. A diversion may or may not be an emergency, but it's not an impending catastrophe the way an engine out would be, so take your time. Remember the cardinal rule, aviate, navigate, and communicate. The first step is aviate. There's no reason to immediately change how the airplane is flying. We're in straight and level flight. The next step is navigate. We could take up time by computing an exact heading to the Dales, but one of the risk management items on the ACS for this task is that we make a timely decision to divert. So a good approximation of heading will do for now just to get us moving in the right direction. Having a look at our position above the ridge here, something a bit left of a due west heading will take us to the Dalles. So we'll turn to about 240 and we can fine tune it later. Next is communicate. We may not be talking to anyone on our check ride, or we may be on flight following. If we're talking to ATC, we'll let them know about the diversion. Seattle Center Skyhawk 518 Foxtrot Tango is diverting to the Dallas Airport, Delta Lima Sierra, remaining at 8,500 for now. Skyhawk 518 Foxtrot Tango, Roger, I'll show the Dallas as your destination. You could also let ATC know the reason for your diversion. And they may ask, though on the check ride, you likely won't be on flight following at this point. We can fine tune our navigation now using a number of tools. First is to pick out some landmarks for pilotage. We have a wonderful landmark in the form of the Columbia River, which we can follow all the way to the new destination, so we'll use that. Though you may not be this lucky on the check ride, and you'll have to use another geographic feature. Next, we'll want to determine an estimated ground speed, arrival time, and fuel consumption. These are specifically called out as required skills on the ACS, so we'll want to make sure we can do this. It wouldn't do us any good to divert to an airport we didn't have enough fuel to reach. Since we're following the Columbia River, we're pretty good with our heading at 240 degrees. Let's make a rough estimate of our distance. The compass rows of this nearby VOR, click attack, can help. We know that on our sectional, the compass rows has a radius of 10 miles. So we can either eyeball or use a straight edge to see that our distance is about three times the length of that 10 mile radius. So we're about 30 miles away. Of course, we could use our plotter to determine this. Just make sure you're using the correct scale for the chart you're using. Next, we'll want to work out what kind of ground speed we can expect to our destination. On our original nav log, we noted a winds aloft at our cruise altitude of 240 degrees at 17 knots, which we computed gave us a ground speed of 89 knots. This was for our original on-course heading of 213 degrees, though. We've turned to the right into that southwesterly wind, so our ground speed will be reduced. Let's say this takes us down to 85 knots. Now we'll want to figure out how long it'll take us to reach the Dalles. We're at 85 knots, needing to travel 30 miles. If we divided 30 by 85 in our heads, we'd get about a third. This is a third of an hour, or 20 minutes. Let's use our E6B. Spinning the rate arrow, the 60 on the inner scale, to line up with 85, we can then read where 30 on the outer scale lines up with the inner scale, and it's 21 minutes. Finally, let's determine our fuel burn. We should know our crew's fuel burn per hour. We used a conservative estimate of 10 gallons per hour for a 20 minute flight, which is a third of an hour. We'd expect to burn three or four gallons on this diversion. So let's review our estimates. Estimated heading is 240 degrees, distance is about 30 miles, ground speed is 85 knots, time en route is 20 minutes, and fuel burned will be 4 gallons. We're looking good, but we'd be hamstringing ourselves if we didn't confirm all this with whatever resources are at our disposal. In fact, the ACS can ding you on failure to utilize all available resources. Let's start with VORs. The Clickitat VOR is close to our airport. 
we can tune into that on 112.3 and ident to listen to the Morse. We'll twist the OBS until the needle centers with the 2 indication. If all else fails, we can fly to the VOR and should be able to spot the airport from there. Next we'll use GPS. The examiner may or may not allow you to use this even if you have one on board. On the Garmin 530 here, we'll hit Direct, Input Kilo, Delta, Lima, Sierra, and hit Enter twice. We could also use the nearest function to find this airport. Not only does the GPS help fine-tune our course to the dowels, but it gives us an accurate calculation of ground speed, time and route, and distance. If we have four flight and we're allowed to use it, we can update our flight plan on there as well. We can do this by dragging our destination from Wasco to the dowels, selecting the airport to change this to our destination, and tapping direct to. We didn't plan to go to this airport, so we may not be familiar with NOTAMs for it. We could use ForeFlight by going to the airport page and tapping NOTAMs to review these. We could also either ask ATC or talk to flight service to get this. From here it's just an arrival into any non-towered airport. We'll first want to get the weather. The ASOS for this field is 135.17. We'll set that into our COM2, flip it active, turn it on, and listen to the report. The Dalles Municipal Airport. Automated weather observation 1846 Zulu. Wind variable at 03. Visibility 10. Sky condition clear. Temperature 16 Celsius. Dew point zero one Celsius. Altimeter three zero three niner. Remarks. Density altitude minus one hundred. The winds are calm. Foreflight tells us there are two runways, the longer of which is one three three one. The winds may be calm at the surface, but with the winds aloft out of the southwest, runway three one would seem to be preferable. We can check the AFD for the preferred wind calm runway as well, but don't get too bogged down for the purposes of this diversion. Let's set our instruments and radios up. We'll put the CTAF 123.0 into our COM1. Next, let's brief how we're going to enter the pattern. It's left traffic for runway 31, since there's no indication of right pattern on the sectional. We can use one of the preferred methods of pattern entry by overflying the field and making a left turn to enter the downwind. For our pattern altitude, we'll want 1,000 feet above field elevation of 247 feet, so we'll use 1,200 feet. We're at 8,500 feet, which means we need to lose about 7,000 feet to get to pattern altitude by the time we reach the airport. We can use the rule of threes to estimate when to start our descent. Three times seven gives us 21 miles out to descend. So maybe just as we reach this bend in the river. Again, you won't get this far on the check ride. The examiner typically breaks you off the task after you've computed estimated time and route and fuel burn, but this is the full exercise. So we'll start our descent. There's high terrain, especially to the north of the airport, but if we stay over the river, we should be fine on this descent. The airport is just at that bend up there in the river, so even though we can't see it, we can cancel flight following. Skyhawk 518 Foxtrot Tango is in the descent to the Dalles. Cancel flight following. Track 5 and 8 Foxtrot Tango, radar services permitted. Squawk and maintain VFR, frequency change is approved. Squawk VFR, frequency change approved, 518 Foxtrot Tango. So just like any arrival into a non-towered field, we'd switch over to the CTAF, listen for any traffic calls for a bit, position ourselves to cross the airport at midfield at pattern altitude, and from 5 to 10 miles out, make our first call on the CTAF. A VFR diversion isn't high on the list of checkride tasks that give students and their instructors heartburn, but because there's a lot to do and manage, a moment's confusion can throw off the whole exercise. Just remember to take your time on this exercise. Don't turn an ordinary change of plans into something more critical by rushing. Always aviate, navigate, and then communicate, and use all of the resources at your disposal, whatever they are, to solve the problem of the diversion, and double and triple check yourself. Meanwhile, if you're preparing for your private pilot checkride, check out the links to other videos and to the private pilot online ground school course. Even if you're an old season pilot, you'll find other resources for you like instrument training and glass cockpit tutorials. Dash on over to the website flight-insight.com today.